when you're working on your boat, does every single thing you use have to be marine? Well, no, not exactly. Hi, I'm Nika Waters and welcome to the Boat Galley Podcast. Today I'm going to be sharing three non-marine boat ingredients that we use in judicious places on our boat during the refit. Today's episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by Infinity, the most trusted name in woven vinyl flooring in the marine industry. Since 2008, Infinity has offered boat owners premier flooring options proven to withstand even the most demanding environments. Each of their products is equipped with UV-stable fade resistance and antimicrobial technology, giving them both durability and style that can't be matched. Thinking about kicking carpet to the curb? Make the switch to Infinity and see the difference true luxury makes. Visit infinitylwv.com and use the coupon code BG20 for 10% off any area rug. Limit one per customer. It's pretty easy, particularly as a new boat owner, to get really sucked into the idea that everything you have for the boat needs to be marine. Sure, there are absolutely some very specific requirements and some very specific challenges that come to having a nonstop live aboard vessel that is in the marine environment. It's challenging. It's really tough. Your boat is living in water all the time. And if something goes wrong with that boat, you could sink. These are not problems you have to deal with when you're thinking about a house. So yes, absolutely. There are a number of times when marine is definitely critical. I would say that anything that you're dealing with that's below the waterline, yeah, I'm going to make sure that's absolutely marine because that's what it's designed to do. Another place that I would definitely use a marine grade product is if it's a structural component. I absolutely have no problem spending the money for something that's marine when I'm talking about those particular applications. But there are times that using non-marine is absolutely just fine. Only times that we use non-marine boat ingredients, and there are three that I'm going to talk about very specifically, they're not affecting the safety of the boat. That's something really critical to understand. I'm not advocating going cheap when you're talking about your safety. Really, really important. So for that, I'm going to talk to you about three things that we're using a lot of on the boat. Well, number one is Bondo. Yep, Bondo. Bondo, the stuff that you see cheap car repair places using, and actually good car repair places use it as well. I consider Bondo to be sort of spackle on steroids, which is probably a very, very watered down version of what it truly is. But that's how I think about it. There's one particular kind of place on the inside of the boat that we are using Bondo. And that spot is that uh, right where our teak boards, this, our flooring is made out of teak, solid teak boards, and it goes directly up to where the hull kind of rounds out. Uh, our hull is an interesting sort of wine glass shape, and the solid teak floors go directly up to where the hull goes out. And this forms kind of a V gully where water can sit and pool. It goes right from the rounded aspect of the hull against the hard, straight up and down vertical of the teak. And that's not a great thing because if any water pools in there, it finds its way right to that gully and then sits right there, which can wind up rotting out the wood. And it's not that we have a lot of leaks because we don't, and we don't actually spill a lot. Those are pretty rare. But if there's anything that goes, it can sit right in that gully. And we decided that we didn't want to have any of that. We don't want any place that water can gather, particularly in places that we don't see a lot. And our remedy is Bondo. And Bondo, you mix it up. It stinks really badly, just FYI. We slap it on there, make it as smooth as we can, come back the next day, sand down whatever is kind of hard, and apply another batch if you need to to fill it up. By doing this, 
We've got a smooth Florida hull joint that has no hidey holes or V gullies where water can gather. And the Bondo cost, it's 23 bucks a gallon at our local hardware store. If we're going to use the marine equivalent of it, and there probably are other things than, than Gudgeon Brothers, but we tend to like the West System Epoxy. And West System Epoxy is 82 bucks or more, depending on where you go. We find it for $82 at our local hardware store for a gallon of the resin. And then you have to have hardener, which is $42 for the same for the container that matches with the resin, plus filler. Sure, Bondo isn't permanent. It's not forever and ever. And will it flex? No, but neither will West System Epoxy. This is not a structural component of our boat. What it is, is it's filling in space in a pretty quick, economical, workable way. The second thing that we've used quite a bit of, and we'll advocate from here to eternity and back, is using regular old household oil enamel paint on places like the bilge. We first learned about this when we were working on our boat way back in the early 90s. And Don Casey's book, This Old Boat, was absolutely our Bible. In fact, it still is. We have the newest version, and it comes with us lots of places. Jeremy's even found it online for times that we don't happen to have our hardcover. We don't love the look of bare fiberglass um, because it's sort of brown and, and not particularly wonderful. And, oh, again, I've got to remind you, I'm talking about inside the boat. I'm using this Home Depot brand oil-based enamel paint inside the boat, not outside the boat. Uh, we do actually like real marine application outside the boat, and pr there probably are those people who wouldn't use marine paint even outside the boat because there are a number of multi-part epoxies that you can use outside of the boat as well. But I digress a little bit. For us on our boat, there's a lot of bare fiberglass hull that is in places that you don't happen to look a lot, like the bilge, um, maybe inside cabinets or under the settees. We like painting those places white for a couple of reasons. One, it's a whole lot prettier to open a cabinet and see a white background. But on a practical bent, having these places painted white allows you far more easily to see if there's any mold or if there are critters, or even if there's water. If it's brown and dark, it's hard to see that stuff. If it's white, it's very, very easy to see if there's a problem that you should be taking care of. Our particular case right now, given that we're doing this massive refit of the boat, we've ripped out a whole lot of the cabinetry and a whole lot of the interior woodwork that's on the boat is gone. And we've got a lot of bare hull that's exposed. We also, way back when in 1990s we put a lot of indoor outdoor carpet on the hull that we have since ripped off and so there's extra bare hull exposed and I gotta tell you it looks a whole lot better painted. Now this paint that we are advocating that I like using a lot the Home Depot brand oil-based enamel it's oil-based it means it can't be cleaned up with water so there is a question on your mind about whether you want to use it from an environmental standpoint. Our experience with what we've done before, we did the bilge in 1992 in this kind of paint, and it looks absolutely as good as new. So I'm willing to do that instead of having to redo it every few years because it gets worn down. Oil-based paint is pretty hard to find. Uh, Rust-Oleum seems to be the one that you can find a lot more easily, but it, our experience is that it doesn't have the coverage, nor does it look remotely as good as the Home Depot brand. Um, we have tried. The Home Depot brand of paint, 30 bucks a gallon. The marine equivalent is a one-part polyurethane, which is about $165 a gallon. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to spend that kind of money on a place that you're not going to look at all the time. We will use the one-part polyurethane on the interior finish that we can see it just levels out better and looks better and is often harder uh, a very hard durable paint is worth it to us on the parts that we see but in the parts that are hidden and we just want it to be pretty and white I'm going to use that oil-based semi-gloss enamel from Home Depot 
all the time. And then the third thing that is non-marine that we've been using a lot of lately is hot glue. I'm going to caution you again. This is not something that we use when we're going to affix things into the boat, but I have to tell you we've been using this all the time as we template new bulkheads and flat surfaces. We don't have to use complicated paper templating. There's no, you know, trying to squish things in and mark it in a corner and hope that you remember what's done right. What we're doing is we take small pieces of wood, uh, small batten pieces, and cut them into smaller bits because you can follow the curve pretty easily and you glue those small pieces together with hot a hot glue gun. It's so fast to cure. So you're holding the wood together, wood pieces together, and often in a small boat, you're trying to get yourself into some weird small physical space and you're holding on to it. You don't have to stay in that weird position for a long time. And the hot glue works totally wonderfully. The items that are stuck together with hot glue, they're not gonna stay together long in a hot, humid, moving marine environment. So we are using this hot glue specifically for templating and it's super, super easy to use. I can't say that there's a marine equivalent, at least not that I'm aware of, because the glue gun being easy to plug in, inexpensive, you're gonna spend 24 bucks and up for a full-size glue gun and you also need glue sticks to fill it. You're not using the small mini glue guns, you're actually using a full-size glue gun, but there's nothing really that works marine-wise. I guess you could staple things together. You could probably epoxy things together and clamp them into pieces. But um, for the amount of time that you have to hold the, the wood together, it's pretty amazing to use a glue gun. There you go. Those are three non-marine ingredients that are pretty important in our current boat refit. We're using Bondo. We're using home oil-based enamel paint. And yeah, we're using a hot glue gun. Isn't it amazing the things you can think of to use that will work for your application? Thanks for listening to the Boat Galley podcast. We appreciate all our listeners and love it that you share your love with us. Have a great day.